Good morning, happy Friday stampers. My name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Canada, and I'm happy to be here on this Friday morning to crack live with you. Uh, today we're gonna be playing with this month's paper pumpkin kit, which is called The Gift of Fall. Um, so it's August 2019 kit. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about what paper pumpkin is and how um, how it works and what's involved in a little bit once we get started. But first, let me just get my iPad up to date here so that I can see your comments. Be sure to say hi uh, so that I know that you're watching. And um, the way I start every month is, or every, every month, every week is I draw for a winner from last week. So normally the project that I make each week, I draw. Um, anybody who has commented gets one entry asked a question um, commented whatsoever on the post whether it's live or on the replay um, and if you share the post whether it's on YouTube when I upload it afterwards or on Facebook then you get five entries so last week I created a scrapbook page and a scrapbook page is a little bit harder to um, to draw for so I picked a card from my collection so this is a card using the Bird Ballot laser cut cards. So they're so pretty. Um, and then with it's advertising or advertising, it's kind of promoting the purple posy color. Love, love, love that color. So I've got everybody's name who entered, who commented or shared the post last week. So I've got everybody's name in there, and the winner is Kristen. Kristen Henry. Uh, hey Kristen, she just joined in, so she won again. I've actually got a few projects here for her. Okay, so I will set that aside for you. Thanks so much for commenting and for sharing. Um, okay, so I'm going to flip the camera around and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Kim. So just bear with me just a second here. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Mom. Okay, let's see how we're looking here. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so. Paper Pumpkin. I think most of you that are on know Paper Pumpkin and know how it works. It is basically a monthly subscription box. Um, so every month, it's it's a surprise. Sometimes they share little peaks or little teasers. So this month, I got mine yesterday. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Holly. So I got mine yesterday and I opened it up and I love fall. Fall crafting is one of my favorite crafts. Um, or times to craft because I love leaves. I love the colors. They're just some such warm rich colors I just I love fall So every month it's a different type of it's a different kit. So it's completely different. Sometimes it's themed Sometimes it's not um, So this month of course is fall based and this month. It's not cards So it's not always cards more often than not it is um, but you get these adorable little brown bags and I thought they'd be perfect for the Thanksgiving table or just for little treats to say thank you um, or that you're grateful for somebody or something that somebody did for you. Like they're just, they're super cute. So you get um, this little instruction booklet. So inside it gives you like just brief, a brief description on how to put it together, how long to cut your ribbon, etc. Um, on the back, it includes what is included in your kit and the coordinating colors. So it always coordinates with Stampin' Up! products. So the coordinating colors. And um, this particular month actually has the Gift of Fall add-on bundle. So you can, if you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, you can purchase the add-on bundle and it will give you 24 card bases in two different designs. Um, and envelopes. So if you prefer when it's cards, um, you can actually convert 
these projects into cards rather than gift bags. So I thought that was really smart because I know a lot of people do prefer when they're cards. So let's look at what, um, <laughs> Amy says she was looking for me at 10. Yeah, no, I go live at 11. I was out running errands at 10, so I wasn't here. Uh, Mary Liz says she, this is her favorite season as well. She got the add-on before she got the box. Okay, so inside the kit, most months, you'll get a sheet of dimensionals. Um, if mini glue dots are needed, you'll get a sheet of mini glue dots. You'll get an exclusive stamp set. So this stamp set is only available to Paper Pumpkin subscribers. So this is the only way that you can get it. And you know what, I love these exclusive stamps because a lot of times they're themed. So I may not actually, I may not necessarily buy a themed stamp set for every occasion. Like for example, Halloween, I don't make Halloween cards, but I do make Halloween treats and I do love to scrapbook Halloween. So I will get paper, but I don't often get the stamp, a Halloween stamp set. Um, so I'm always grateful for the stamp set that comes in the paper pumpkin Halloween themed kit, because then that gives me some Halloween stamps to use. Um, so this one is kind of Thanksgiving based. Uh, so it's got happy Thanksgiving. It's got this pretty little image here, the word enjoy. It says grateful for family like you and thankful for friends like you. So this one has lots of greetings and then just one simple image. And then every month your kit will look a little different. So this month we got this beautiful um, seam binding, I think it's crushed curry is the color. Yeah, crushed curry ribbon and lots of linen thread. You never have enough linen thread. Self-adhesive sequence in gold in two different sizes. So these ones are a little bit larger and then some that are a little smaller. And then what I love about Paper Pumpkin is everything is pre-cut for you. And basically, if there's embellishments in the kit, you just pop them out. So these are some printed, uh, what color is this? Blackberry Bliss leaves. So you can see that I've popped some out here. And then we get two sheets of these. The, this is printed vellum. It looks stunning, like on white. Let me bring back that sheet of dimensionals. On white, those colors just pop. Love, love, love them. Okay, what else do we have in the kit here? We've got two sheets of labels. So there's two different sizes. You can see a long one and then this shape. So you get two sheets of those. You get a sheet of these leaves. And then you get another sheet of those other shaped leaves, just in a different, this is pretty peacock with stripes. You get two sheets of these tags. Here's one popped out so you can kind of see what they look like. And you get two sheets of these circles, printed circles. So these are all, all you have to do is pop these out and they're ready to go. You get two sheets of these, this shape tag as well, just in plain white. And then you get a sheet of these stitched circles in Mary Merlot. And then you always get an ink spot. Sometimes you get two. I know, Shirley, the vellum is amazing, isn't it? So this month you get Mary Merlot. And they've promised us that in any 12 month given period that you will not receive the same color ink pad. So if you're a subscriber for 10 months, or 12 months, sorry, um, you know that you won't receive the same ink color um, any two months. And then for this one, it creates, you get six of these gift bags. And here is one, I completed one as it's intended to be. So isn't that cute? All that dimension with the leaves and the sequence and the twine and then the beautiful seam binding. Oh, I love it. Love, love, love it. And then this month they included a little peek at ne what's to come next month. So it's Halloween themed and it's called, called Bon Appetit. And they've told us that it will be 20, they, they call them bone chilling treat boxes. So they will be food safe. So it is going to be a 3D project. Um, but at Halloween, that's the perfect opportunity to make them, make little treats, okay? So that's basically what you get in a kit. 
Um, and you know what? I don't, to be honest, I don't always love the projects that they have, but there's always something that I can do with it. And there's a, a great uh, group on Facebook that is called, I think it's called the Paper Pumpkin Fan Club, um, started by Rachel Tessman, and there are a ton of alternates. So if you don't love something, all you have to do is go to that Facebook group or even go to Pinterest and search that month's kit and you will find a ton of ideas. So I wanted to convert some of the leftover pieces or some of the pieces into cards. So I pretty much took the same design as this other tag. So this tag here, I changed it up a little bit um, and I just added it to a card front. So that gives you an idea of what you can do. If you get a 3D project and you don't necessarily want to use it as a 3D project, you can easily take their idea and then put it on the front of a card, okay? But today, we are going to do something different. We're gonna do a scrapbook page because all month long I've been focused on scrapbooking. Um, so I'm just gonna keep going with it and I'm going to wing it because I have an idea in my head, but um, I have not pre-done the page. So we are just gonna go with the flow here. So I'm starting with a piece of white 12 by 12. And what I did was um, I wanna make it thank for Thanksgiving. So for so so I can add Thanksgiving pictures. I didn't I looked through some of my past albums and I don't seem to have any Thanksgiving pictures left to to scrapbook. So um it'll be for this year. So I looked and I wanted to I I thought okay, let's do it for two 4 by 6 photos, two horizontal 4 by 6 photos. So I looked at the coordinating colors um and I looked at what might make the best matte color. And I think soft suede for me would probably be the best. So I cut two mats for four by six photos and they measure four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So it'll give me just a little bit of that brown showing around the edge once I add my photo. Okay, all right. So I think I'm gonna position them like that. But before I put them down, I want to do something to my background. So I looked at the stamps that were in this kit and that's the only image. And you know what, I like it, but I wanted something a little bit more fallish. So what I'm gonna do is I am actually going to use something that is not yet released. It will be in, where is it, here it is. It is coming out in the holiday catalog. Good morning, Andrew. So I want to use this leaf here and create a very subtle background on the page. So um, this is part of a suite. There will be, there's coordinating framelits. These leave, leaves make the most beautiful, um, they cut and emboss at the same time with one pass through the big shot. Um, actually, let me grab something. I'll show you an upcoming class that I'm gonna do. Just give me one second. Okay, so this is a class that I'm going to do um, at my September retreat, and then I will offer it to my customers as well. Um, you know, and it just doesn't, uh, nothing looks as good in person or on camera as it does in person. But, so I used those, that leaf dye and cut out several colors. I love these color combinations, or this color combination. Pear pizzazz, um, Pretty Peacock, Mary Merlot, and Mint Macaron. Love, love, love it. So, and this is ribbon that's in that suite. This is an older stamp set, but um, yeah, kind of a fun project, something a little bit different. So that will be a class that you can watch for that will be coming up. Um, and like I said, there's DSP that goes with that. There are these cute little wood elements that like there's a whole suite of products that go along. But for today, we're just going to use this stamp right here. And we're going to stamp a background. And like I said, I want it to be very subtle. So I'm actually going to stamp with Versamark and then emboss with clear. Where's my Versamark? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rub my cardstock with my embossing buddy just so that the, the powder doesn't stick where I don't want it to stick, okay? And I'm going to stamp my pattern so that it goes kind of like this, because you saw that my picture is gonna go here and here. 
So I want to stamp kind of in that direction as well. So I'll just give this a quick rub down, remove any oils from my fingers, etc. Uh, Kristen says, not related to today's Facebook Live, but where did you get the frame from for that wreath? Um, I got it. It's a place in Sherwood Park. Is this tiny little place. I think it's called the Crafter's Den. I believe that's what it's called. If you look them up on Facebook, you'll be able to, it, their address and stuff will be there. They're just kind of in this tiny little place, in this tiny little strip mall. Um, but they have a whole bunch of different sizes of that frame. That style of frame. Okay, so I'm going to take the leaf and just stamp my Versa mark. And look at this. It's a brand new Versa mark pad. Love it. I have not had a brand new Versa mark pad in I don't know how many years. And it's so juicy and it's so clean. Love a new ink pad. Okay, so I'm just kind of, I know some of these will be covered over with the photos or the photo mats. But I want to make sure that I kind of go in that direction so that where so that you'll see them peeking out from behind the photo mats. Hey Beth. Okay. Actually I'll do one more, I think, right in the corner going off the page. Just like that. Okay. So now, you can't see that because that is, it's just Versamark. It, you might be able to see just a little bit of glossiness. It's very, very subtle. So now I'm going to turn or sprinkle it with clear embossing powder. You could also use white. in and undo the rest. Okay, I promise for you guys who, those of you who are not scrapbookers, once September comes, I will be more focused on card making. Just with this series that I'm doing on my blog with all these scrapbooking tips, I'm just finding it, posting every day on my blog is Man, it's a lot of work. Normally I only post three times a week, but I'm doing these tips for 31 days in a row and it's been so time intensive that that's really all I have time to do is just work on the content for that. Got a little hair in there. So this will be tomorrow's post. Tomorrow's post, tomorrow's tip is to pick a theme, grab some photos and some product that kind of fit that theme and to document document it. So I, I don't, obviously, like I said, I don't have photos, but I picked the Thanksgiving theme and then grabbed some products that I wanted to use, including this month's paper pumpkin kit and just creating with that. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right, so now I'm gonna bring in my heat tool and heat set this. So I apologize, it's gonna get a little bit noisy and it might take a few minutes here. And you see how it's starting to go shiny love embossing
Almost done. Okay. All right. So now at this point, like I said, I wanted a subtle background. So I am not that this is how I'm going to leave it. I think you guys can kind of see the images on there. Um, Amy says she has a hard time seeing clear on white. Yeah, you can see you can't see it until it. Well, I mean, you can see it if you look closely. But yes, on the on camera, like it's really hard to hard to see. Um, so I'm going to leave this like this because I just want that subtle, subtle background. I don't want to, I don't want to add a ton of color or anything like that, um, to my background. But if you wanted to add a pop of background, you could color in these leaves using your aqua painter and some, um, some ink refill or your ink pads. Um, you could sponge. So do an emboss resist technique. So you could sponge some color over top and it would really, really make that um that image pop oh while you heat set it yeah i find that i have to hold it kind of that's probably what you guys probably noticed i had to hold it kind of up at an angle like this when i heat emboss it so i can see where the powder is um, and then i can see it change from powdery to glossy and that helps but yeah holding it down like this i find it is hard to see Okay, so my background is done. I'm going to reposition my, my pictures. Oh, I got a little bit of something in there. Okay, so my mats, I'm gonna try to position them so that I can still see some of these embossed leaves here. Okay, and then what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've taken out some of the paper pumpkin pieces. So I basically took out at least one of each of those pieces so that I could kind of play around with how I wanted them to go. And I was kind of thinking that this might go up here and then I'll trim it off so that I can still use um, that bit, that top bit. Okay, so let's stick our mats down. Let's stick the mats down first. And I shared with you last week how I do not like to put adhesive right to the edges of my photos. So that will allow me to tuck in little bits and pieces if I want to after I've stuck them down. So, and I'm using a really good adhesive. So Fast Fuse is super sticky. So I'm not worried about not going right to the edge. Okay, so you can still see one of the images here a little bit here and then one over here so i'm happy with that this will just add adhesive to the bottom bit and i'm going to put this up here like let's move it over a little bit like that and then i'll trim that off because i might be able to use that for something else So hopefully everybody who is a subscriber, a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, already received their kit. Hopefully I'm not spoiling anything for anybody. Okay, um, let's see. Now I'm just gonna kind of play around with some positioning here. Move this up so you guys can see. I think that would be cute there. Um, I love these on the white. Oh my gosh, I love them on the white. Let's see. Tuck that in there. This could kind of go. Let's trim this. Oh, Beth, you haven't gotten yours yet? Well, I hope I didn't ruin the surprise for you. I apologize if, if I did. So see how by not adding adhesive right around the edges that allows me to tuck, tuck little things in there. Okay, um, let's see. I 
tied a bow with that thread that might be cute up there. And this could go up here as well. Maybe a little leaf. Once I start sticking them down, I'll be able to be able to decide or commit. Okay, so let's I want my I want a title on here. So I think what I'm gonna do, I pulled out Okay, I pulled out this A Wish for Everything from the annual catalog. This is a bundle. You get two stamps, two stamp cases of stamps, and it's kind of got a whole bunch of occasions. So it's got um, Halloween, New Year's, I think it's got Merry Christmas, it's got Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Saint, I think there's St. Patrick's Day in here as well. But I wanted to use the Thanksgiving I'm not gonna use the happy from this. I might use I might use this happy here, but before I decide on that, I'm gonna cut my Thanksgiving, because I thought, I don't know, it might be too busy, but I thought that might be cute going across like that. Um, let's see, let's try it in the blue, the peacock. So I'm gonna grab a scrap of peacock. long enough, yep, and grab my die cut machine. All right. Good morning, Barb. Carefully pull this out. So Barb, we're working with this month's paper pumpkin kit. I'm scrapbooking with it. Okay. Let's poke this out. Okay, that is a bit busy. Maybe if I add a strip of vanilla in behind that, or vanilla, a strip of uh, vellum in behind that might help. Let's see what that looks like. That helps. That makes it pop a little bit more. Okay, and then we can add, let's see, what does this look like in behind here? Another leaf here. I think I want some twine in there. Okay, so let's let's stick this down first. And then I'm going to use some linen thread. Okay. And I kind of want this like in between these two and centered in between this gap. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna take some linen thread. Thanks, Mary. And just wrap it around my fingers so that I get kind of like a little loopy thing here. A messy loop. And I'll just add a little bit of adhesive here and here to hold it down. Okay, and then let's make it a little bit bigger here. Put that, do I want that on or do I not want that on? I 
think I do want it on. So I'm gonna use a dimensional, just put a dimensional right in the middle. That will allow me to tuck my leaves in where I want them. And then this guy, I'm going to just kind of angle cut, figure out how long I want it. Just like that. And stick that on. So let me grab some Tombow so I can stick that on. I gotta remember to poke out my dots for my eyes as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stick this on to the vellum first so that I can strategically place the adhesive behind the vellum to stick it on here. So I'm starting with my top layer when I work with vellum so that I know where to position my adhesive. And you don't need a lot of adhesive just a little bit. Okay, and then I need my, got one dot here. My eye, I'm missing the other one. There is a little piece here that I can use. Okay, I need my take your pick tool to pick those up. They're so tiny. Okay, so I am going to put a tiny dot of Thanksgiving. This is the eye. Boy, some of these letters are hard to tell. And then V, the, this is an I. Okay, so I'll pick up this little thing here. Use my poker. And do the other one. does everybody have planned for this weekend? Okay, now I want to reposition this so that it's going the way that it should be going. It's probably going to be the hardest part of the whole page here. Okay, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to flip this over and then I'm going to bring in some of the mini glue dots and just use right around the edge. I'm just going to cut some super narrow strips. Actually, I'll probably do three. Rearranging some of your card making stuff. Oh, isn't organizing crafting supplies like, I don't know if anybody else finds this, but I absolutely love to organize my craft room. I could spend hours and hours and hours organizing my craft room. Okay. So, oh. Okay, this is really not that easy to do on camera here. With all of you watching me. Okay, so let's peel off the backing at the same time we do this here. Beth is moving her daughter and her husband into their first home. That's exciting. First home, wow. That's a big step. Okay, so we've got that. And that wasn't really all that smart. I probably should have used regular adhesive because now it's popped up. I've got two ends 
that are double popped up. Does that make sense? Okay, let's take this one off and we will just use the outer bits. Let's see if that works. Do you want to come organize my craft room, Amy? Oh, I would love to. Seriously, man, I, I love that kind of thing. Okay, so there we go. Look at that, I like that. Okay, so let's see. I feel like that because that is craft on craft. It needs another color popped in there. So maybe we'll double up on the leaves here. And then we'll tuck the blue one down here, or do we want to do one of, do we want to do this one down here? Oh, I like that one down there. Okay, let's do that. So I'm just going to add a bit of adhesive behind these. And tuck them in here. one underneath here okay actually I don't think I'm gonna add the word happy I might just do Thanksgiving and then put the year underneath here okay I like this here but I think it needs a bit more dimension I will come back to that I'm just gonna work up here next so I'm gonna add just half of one of these circles is a great way to stretch the use too so I still have this little bit left I'm gonna have half a circle here that I can use for something else paper pumpkin kits are great for scrapbooking you could really do a lot with a paper pumpkin kit okay so we've got that this little bit now do I want this color in there or do I want a different color I think I want some green and yellow. I don't think I want that Mary Merlot in there. So let's trim this again. I think I like the green. Okay. Thanks, Kristen. I could even tuck this in behind here and do something like that. Put another leaf up here so I have another cluster. I always like to do things in threes. I think I've mentioned that before. So I've got one, two, and then I'd have another one up here. And then I might just leave this plain. I'm not sure, we'll see. See when I get there. Okay, so that could be for some sort of highlight or word or something that I want to include on here. Thanks, Beth. Well, I don't know, I don't know about the brilliant, Kristen. <laughs> okay. Do that, add another one of these crumb cake leaves. So I'm just curling them up just to give them a bit more dimension. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's gonna be behind. Oh, it's hard when nothing's stuck down and everything moves. I really wanna include this ribbon. Right, Mary Liz? Can't do a layout without ribbon. Okay, let's, it's too hard when everything is moving around. So let's commit to some of these things here. So I'm gonna use a couple mini glue dots, stick my ribbon down first. Now, do I want it on the seam there? Yeah, I want it there. So just because this is gonna be at the top of the page and these mini glue dots are really tiny, I'm gonna use a couple of them side by side. And I am not concerned. I actually don't mind a little bit of 
a few things sticking out from the top of my page. So you'll see that it's hanging off the top, but I'm completely okay with that. Maybe I could tuck that under there and do this under here and then have this going across. Yes, I like that, okay. They remind you of cat tails or bull rushes. What reminds you of cat tails or bull rushes? These ones or these ones? I just love these vellum, printed vellum pieces. Oh my gosh, they're so nice. Okay, and then that will go there. Now there are some words that go along with this Thanksgiving. It says, giving thanks for you with a very grateful heart. I wonder if that, look at this, I haven't even mounted this stamp set. I've only used, I've only mounted the ones, <laughs> the one that I've used so far. Um, giving thanks, I wonder if that would fit. Let's mount, let's go ahead and mount it here. Uh, Does anybody else do that where you don't mount your whole set? You just kind of mount it as you go. I really need to spend like probably a good hour mounting some of my stamps. I've got quite a collection of stamps that need to be mounted. It's not something I enjoy doing. So that's why I tend to do it just as I need it. Sorry, I need to bring this so it's right underneath me. Okay, so now I wonder if this will fit. I think it will. Okay, I think I'm gonna stamp that on here or I'm going to attempt to. Okay, so I need a block. This is not good enough. Let's move this out of the way for now. Okay, now because this is very close in color to my table, I do find it much easier to have some contrast. So I'm just gonna bring in a scrap piece of paper. And we will use Mary Merlot, which, where did my ink pad go? Thanks, Shirley. Oh, Beth, you don't like mounting stamps either? Okay, so I, because I just mounted this, I haven't used this stamp, I am going to stamp it on the bottom of my scrap paper to see if I mounted it straight looks pretty good okay and even if it wasn't the first time usually I almost always stamp on my scrap first and before I stamp on to whatever it is that I'm stamping on um, it ensures that I have the words going the right way bring in we'll do mini dimensionals for this one So when you guys use your dimensionals, curious, do you start on one side and work your way in or do you just pick from willy-nilly, pick from anywhere? Oh, my screen's going blurry. Are you guys all blurry? good all right now what do we have here did I stick any of these things down no nope. okay let's commit to these so we'll start with the back layer we'll do this guy first start from one side and go to the other and then this one tuck that in over like that and then we'll add some adhesive to these guys blurry in and out 
I wonder if that's my connection. I bet it is. Okay. All right. This guy needs to be stuck down. Man, I love that. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. I think the only thing that we need to add is I want to add some of these little pretty little gold sequins in here. So let's do this. Not blurry, but the picture froze for a minute. Okay. All right. So Oh, Beth starts in the middle. That's interesting. So I'm just gonna use a combination of the little ones and the big ones. I love that they're self-adhesive. And you'll see that I will also make sure that I have an odd number. So I don't like this guy here. Okay, and then let's put some up here. So same when I pick my embellishments, I start, I have to go in, row, in, the row, in a row. I can't do, I can't do random. It needs to be in order. Is anybody else struggling with, struggle with the positioning of things like this? Okay, so we've got five, three, do you need more? Do I, should I add more up there? It does need it another spot, right? I'm wondering, hmm. That looks like too much like it's in a line. There we go. I'm not sure I like that. I don't know, do they need to be closer together? No willy nilly for you, hey Shirley. <laughs> I don't know, there's something that I'm not feeling the sequence. I don't know if I'll be able to get them all off without wrecking them. without ripping my paper. Isn't that terrible? Ugh. I don't know, there was something, the sequence just wasn't doing it for me. I actually don't mind that. Let's try moving this one in closer. Okay, so I'm not alone. We keep each other in good company, right Amy? In a little closer maybe I'll like that better it almost feels like they're just kind of out there floating they don't have a purpose is that better oh I still don't know I think I'm just gonna leave it I could fuss all day and sometimes that's what that's what holds us back from getting things done right we strive for perfection and it never comes all right, uh, let's see, that's why we get along so well. We're warped in the same direction. <laughs> all right, so yeah, so I've got a Thanksgiving page all ready to go um, for two four by six photos using this month's paper pumpkin kit and I'm quite happy with it. And it took, like it hardly took any time at all. Well, I guess it took longer, it's almost 10 to 12. Um, it probably took 30 minutes, but Super fun, hey? It's nice when all the elements come pre-cut for you. I mean, really all we stamped was just the background on the page, and then we die cut this. Apart from that, everything else was 
included in the kit, which is really nice. All right, so if you are not a Paper Pumpkin subscriber and would like to become a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, I will post the link here. And if you're watching the YouTube replay, I'll post the link in the, the description below. Um, and yeah, you can sign up month to month. You can put your subscription on hold. You can um, do a, three, a one month prepaid subscription, a three month paper, prepaid subscription, six or 12 and you get with the 12 month subscription you get um stampin rewards with that which is always nice uh so there's lots and lots of benefits it's the kit is in canada i think it's 30 dollars a month if i remember correctly 30 plus tax i believe it is so it's a great deal seriously and i love the surprise every month and some sur subscription boxes are really popular okay so thanks so much for watching um i hope you all have a fabulous weekend hopefully you get a chance to get crafty i'm not sure what the weather's like going to be like it's i know it's not nice out there today really windy um but yeah hopefully hopefully you get a chance to get a little bit crafty this weekend and um share what you create i'd love to see what you guys make post it on the in the comments below and i'm sure everybody else would love to see it as well all right thanks so much for watching take care bye guys